Welcome to the Trend Micro Deep Security video series. My name is Nick Russo and I'm a customer service engineer on the Hybrid Cloud Support Team. For part one of configuring the anti-malware protection module, we're going to step through the options and configuration of real-time, scheduled, and manual scan configurations. In part two of this video, we'll review full versus quick manual scans, the scan cache options for the deep security virtual appliance, exclusions, quarantine settings, and maximizing performance when anti-malware is enabled. In deep security, there are three different classifications of scan configurations, real-time, manual, and scheduled scans. Manual and scheduled scans have the same settings available, while the real-time scan configuration has some additional options. We'll start by looking at the real-time scan configuration. I'm going to create a new configuration, and on the first page of the options, I can give the scan configuration a name and description. Going down the page, I have two options for scanning documents for exploits. I can scan for known critical vulnerabilities, or I can also scan with aggressive detection of unknown suspicious exploits. The second option can potentially generate false positive reports and uses additional external components to identify potential exploits. The next option I have available for my real-time scan configuration is for predictive machine learning. Deep Security provides enhanced malware protection for unknown threats and zero-day attacks through predictive machine learning. It also uses advanced machine learning technology to correlate threat information and perform in-depth file analysis to detect emerging security risks through digital DNA fingerprinting, API mapping, and other file features. Predictive machine learning is only available for Windows. During real-time scans, when Deep Security detects an unknown or low prevalence file, Deep Security scans the file using the Advanced Threat Scan Engine to extract file features. It then sends the report to the Predictive Machine Learning Engine on the Trend Micro Smart Protection Network. Through the use of malware modeling, Predictive Machine Learning compares the sample to the malware model, assigns a probability score, and determines the probable malware type that the file contains. With the next option, Behavior Monitoring, Deep Security can compare potential threats to our Global Census Server and Good File Reputation Service and prevent systems from being infected. In order for machines to take advantage of this feature, they must have internet access to connect these two external services. This feature is only available for Windows systems running the Deep Security Agent, and enabling this option can also cause system performance to be degraded. When the option for Backup and Restore Ransomware Encrypted Files is selected, Deep Security will create backup copies of files that are being encrypted in case they are being encrypted by a ransomware process. Our next option for the real-time scan configuration is for enabling spyware grayware protection. For a full classification of spyware grayware, please refer to the links in the video description for more information. With the IntelliTrap option, we can help reduce the risk of viruses that attempt to circumvent virus filtering as virus writers often compress executable files into other file types. By analyzing a file's header and comparing files against other malware characteristics, we can identify our virus using this technique. For machines running the Deep Security Agent, we have the option available for scanning process memory for malware. This feature is also only available for Windows systems. If I want alerts to be sent when this particular scan configuration logs an event, I can enable the option on the bottom of this page. I'm going to move past the Inclusions and Exclusions tabs for now, and we'll cover them in Part 2 of this video. On the Advanced tab, I have the ability to specify if files are scanned on read and write, read, or write. I also have an option on this page for scanning compressed files. When we enable Scan Compressed Files, we have a few additional options we can set for scanning compressed files. We have the maximum size of individual extracted files in megabytes, maximum levels of compression, and the maximum number of files to extract. Next, I have the option to scan embedded Microsoft Office objects. With different Office file types, another file can be embedded into an Office file, and the embedding can be done inside of another embedded file. With Deep Security, you have the option of how many layers of embedded files you want to scan into. The remediation actions are used to determine what action the anti-malware protection module will take, depending on the type of malware detected. We'll also review this list a bit more in depth in Part 2. The last option for the real-time scan configuration is related to network directory scans. With this option enabled, network shares and map network drives will be included in real-time scans. It's recommended that file servers be protected by deep security and that this option only be used if absolutely necessary, as enabling it may degrade performance. Scheduled and manual malware scan configurations are very similar to the real-time scan configuration, except there are options that are specific to real-time scans. Options like predictive machine learning, behavior monitoring, IntelliTrap, and process memory scan are all part of the real-time scan configuration. Additionally, the real-time scan read-write options, 
and scanning network directories are also specific to the real-time scan configuration. With scheduled and manual scan configurations, you gain the option of being able to specify CPU usage of high, medium, or low to lower the resources consumed by deep security during a scheduled or manual scan. That's going to wrap up part one of configuring the anti-malware protection module. Make sure to check out the links in the description for additional information on anti-malware and stick around for part two. If you have any questions about the information from this video, please reach out to our support team and we'd be glad to help. Thanks for watching.